Hello, media design students. Sorry I can't be with you there today. I'm feeling really sick tonight, and you might hear me sniffling in the background as I record this, but I just want to give you some instructions for today to make sure things are clear for what it is that you'll, you'll be working on while I'm away. Uh, I'll be away today because I'm sick, and then also on Wednesday, if I'm not sick, I'll be at a meeting. If I am sick, I'll just be away again. So we'll see what happens. But I just wanted to make sure that things are clear while you have the sub who's in so that you know exactly what we're going to be working on. I've just posted two new assignments. They're both due at the end of class on Friday. So we have all three blocks to work on them. But uh, there's a decent amount of work to get through, so make sure you're not slacking off while I'm away. The first one that I want you to focus on is this assignment called Photo and Video Framing. I'm just going to click on it here and take a peek at what's in it. And you have some resources to peek at. The most important one being the Shot Angles PDF file. I'm going to pop it open for you, and I want you to take a few minutes to look over it and take a look at some of the new terminology we're going to be talking about. I'm actually going to give you a more formal lesson about this document on Friday to give you my perspective and a bit more information about all this stuff. But what we're looking at at the start of our new unit about video and photo editing is some of the different ways that we capture video and photo footage. And so we have different perspectives. The establishing shot or the extreme long shot is kind of a really far distant uh, way of taking imagery and as we scroll through we see that things get a lot more up close and personal focusing on the full body of a person and then as we scroll down here if teams wants to work is getting closer and closer so we, we see more of the person featured in the frame each step of the way up until we reach something called wow this is really laggy weird the extreme close-up, where we're just right up close in the person's face, kind of an uncomfortable distance if this was real life. But again, on Friday, we're going to talk more about when we might use each of these different types of framing uh, design choices. But for now, just take a note of the different terms and see an example image of what they look like. We're also going to cover a the idea of having multiple people in a scene and different camera angles, particularly three of them. Um, I don't know why this is being so laggy. It's really odd. Scroll down, please. The high angle. Think of this as trying to intimidate somebody or make someone feel a little bit less important. Then we have the, scrolling down here, low angle. When you're below the characters, making yourself feel unimportant or maybe even kind of sneaky and kind of like sneaking around, trying not to be noticed. And the final one, the oblique angle. Kind of like an, a weird unusual camera angle, kind of tilted, which you might use for some creative purpose. So for now, just study this document, the different types of framing, get used to the terminology, because you'll be doing a little research post for me to show me that you understand what these things mean. So in this assignment, photo and video framing, there's some vocabulary, and there's a, a bit of a uh, information about the lesson that we're working on here. But what you need to worry about is this 13 shot assignment. And what you're going to do is watch movie trailers on your own on YouTube. Whatever movies that you're curious about, as long as they are appropriate, you can watch the trailers and keep an, a critical eye looking for examples of the different shot choices that we've seen. I've given you a list of some of those shot choices, plus a few extra. Um, think of like nose room or panning. There's some new terms here that I want you to take a look do some research to figure out what they mean and find examples of these different types of camera angles. And your job is to take a screenshot of 10 different types. So there's 13 in total, meaning you can ignore three of them. Cut out the three that you understand the least and I'll help you understand them later. But your task is, for example, to head to YouTube and maybe look up a movie. I'll just look up a nice appropriate one, Aladdin for now. And we'll take a peek at an Aladdin trailer Let's uh, throw a trailer in here. And I'll just take a peek at this Aladdin trailer. Look at you, Tracy Steve. Get through this ad first. A nice 15 second long one, the maximum length. Thanks YouTube for doing this right now. And what we're going to be doing is looking for different examples of the different types of shots that we might see. So here in the Aladdin trailer right now, I'm just gonna pause it. And this is already an example of one of the types of shots. I'm going to let you figure out what this might be an example of, but your task would be to actually do a Windows search for something called the snipping tool. You can just press the Windows key and type in snip, and you'll see this pop up, the snipping tool. And what I can do is press new, 
And then whatever I click and drag over, it will form, make an image of it. Now I have this image of Will Smith, and I can save it. I recommend saving it on a USB or maybe on your student drive, somewhere that you can keep track of it. I'm just gonna make a folder on my USB called um, camera frame choices or something like that. And once it's created, I'm gonna just name this image, maybe image one or whatever I wanna name it. Save it, and I'm gonna keep on watching trailers for different examples of different types of frame selection. So this here looks quite a similar one to Will Smith earlier, but if I kept on watching, maybe I'll see a framing two people in the same scene, that's a little bit different. And once I've gathered 10 different shots, I'm gonna go into WordPress. And under either pages, if you're comfortable with adding a new page, or under posts, I'm just gonna add a new post. I'm gonna have my uh, camera video framing research post. And in here, I'm going to add the media there's my son from an earlier post, he's so cute. I'm gonna add a new one from that spot that I stored it earlier. Under here, the, where'd I put it? Camera framing choices is my first one. And here's that first image that I got. I'm gonna insert this image once it's loaded and I'm gonna comment below on the type of framing it is. The above is an example of, and you're gonna tell me what's an example of, what type of framing it is. And you need to include 10 different images of 10 different types of framing that you're going to then publish and post and share with me as proof that you are able to recognize the types of image framing. And that's your main goal for today's class. And if you manage to finish early, then you can move on to the second assignment, which is gonna be our primary focus on Wednesday and Friday, using phones to capture digital content. Let me pop this open really quick. And there's just one instruction for it. In this assignment, I've given you a challenge task. Let's read this over together. In this unit, we're going to be recording videos using our phones, editing, editing them in Adobe Premiere, so remember those stuff, it sounded a bit funny, and After Effects, and then sharing them with others, both for fun and to gather feedback. Before we get started learning the software and testing out some of our ideas, we need to ensure we are mindful of how we can best use our phones to capture video content. For your first assignment of this unit, on, at least in this regard, you'll be working independently to create how to capture great videos on your phone, process journal post. Take a look at, uh, take on the following mindset when you create your post. So this is your design challenge. Listen closely to this and make sure you read this over a few times to know exactly what you're trying to aim to create. You have just been hired on as a consultant for a community-based website looking to gather photographs and video footage from cultural events around the city, such as concerts, events, festivals, and there's a typo here, and a variety of other events. That works a little bit better. The studio doesn't have enough staff to get footage from everything, so they plan on relying on community members to share photo and video content with them. Community members get to have their content featured on the site for a large audience to see, and the studio gets extra content to post to their site. Win-win. However, after kicking off this initiative, the website creators have come to learn that the quality of camera on the average person's phone has not translated to pictures or videos being captured in design-focused ways. They have hired you to help. Your first task on the job? Provide a how-to guide to help people use their phones to take pictures and videos better. Because this guide is meant for the average user, it can't get too complex or technical. Furthermore, it needs to be laid out in an organized and easy to read manner. So that's the mindset you take on for this design challenge. And here's what you're gonna be doing. Create a blog post that fulfills the request explained above. Get researching and designing. Your post should include content that helps whoever reads your post use their phones to capture better images and videos with some thoughtful tips and maybe maybe you wanna list it as like top five tips or maybe you wanna have more paragraph explanations. You need to make sure the information is presented in an organized and clear layout that's easy for other people to follow and make sense of. Imagine peers at your school actually putting together or using your guide to capture better photos and images. And also I want you to reference any website video or content you borrow ideas from in, at the bottom of your post, just so that I know where you got your information from. That's a requirement. And you will be assessed on a research component, criterion A, gathering information and representing it, 
as a part of this assignment. So, some interesting work ahead of you. Today, focus on actually getting the photo and video framing terms understood and the creation of your 10 image process journal evidence post. And then if you have time today or on Wednesday, move on to creating your using your phone to capture digital content post. Final thing, and I'll make a little comment and notepad about this, you can read along. If you haven't recorded your mind map video yet, if you haven't, it's overdue. Please make sure you record your video either today or on Wednesday. We are going to be posting our videos to YouTube together on Friday. You better be done by then or else I probably shouldn't be threatening you guys on a video posted to YouTube, but I'm going to do it anyway because I'm just like that. So three things to do. Quick final recap, photo and video framing, image post, using phones and capture digital media content, design challenge post, and make sure your videos for the mind map are recorded. All of that will be wrapped up by the end of the week. I will see you guys on Friday to continue diving deeper into video editing content. All the best.